Hey guys, happy new year, happy new year. So good to see so many of you guys already on. As soon as I hit the live button, all these messages came through. I'm like, oh my gosh, I won't be able to keep up. So welcome. <laughs> uh, the first name I did see though on YouTube, uh, Claudette, message me and let me know what e-packet you want. And on Facebook, Sue Potts, let me know what e-packet you want. Uh, just private message me or email me and let me know and I will get that sent off to you. So, hello, Chris. Hello, Molly Ann. Hello, Cheryl and Carol and Janet and Melissa and Cheryl and Monty and Darlene <laughs> and Lori and Anne. Hello, Judy Thacker. So good to see you guys on. And Janet Roach. Hello, Judith and Virginia. Wow, look at you guys just popping on. I have um, two screens set up, but then I also did something in front of me, which I thought would work. Hello, Margo, um, and Lynn, and Tammy, and Sandra, and Sue. Um, I thought it would work, but the comments are like on the picture, so they kind of blend in. I can't see them. Um, I bought this additional little thing to hold a mini iPad. Not working so great today. <laughs> Hey, Keiko. Hello, Linda Alaveras. I hope you're feeling well, my friend. Um, so good to see you on. Oh, I'm excited to be seen, Molly Ann. Thank you. Hi, Kathy and Debbie. So I'm going to look over here, actually, because I can't see there. <laughs> um, oh, Denise, it's so good to see you and hear your, uh, to hear my voice. Thank you. Um, without a cough, although I feel like I need to cough right now since I just said it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's been, it's been a minute, right? Hello, Linda Safranco and Gail and Paula. So good to see you guys on. Uh, glad to be joining you. Thank you, Patty. I'm glad you're joining me as well. And Lisa. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yes, I got about, I would say maybe five inches cut off my hair. Got my hair done um, <laughs> and my nails. So new year new me. <laughs> no, it's the same old me. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Linda. I've been missing you guys too. Hi, Carol and Sharon. Hi, Letitia and Janet and Paula. Hello, Cindy. Good to see you on. You're on both. You're on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> so if you are new here and you're just joining me, thank you very much. I'm Sandy McTeer and this is Sundays in the Studio with Sandy. Um, my word of the year is consistency. So let me just start by saying, I hope I'm a little more consistent with my Sundays in the studio with me. Um, it's been a little crazy, but what I want to do and what I want to incorporate this new year, um, in addition to lessons and what I kind of started last year, which I really got a great, um, I got great feedback from. So let me just say that. Um, on product, how to use product, techniques, things like that. So we're going to start incorporating some of those um, into the Sundays in the studio with moi, okay? <laughs> Hello, Cecilia. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Hello, Laura. You left YouTube? <laughs> no worries, Cindy. Hi, Julie from Louisiana. Hello, Liz. I love, every time I see Liz... Every time I see your name pop up, I don't know if you know, but it reminds me of the very first time I taught at a convention. I think I've even mentioned this on a live before. Um, when I taught at Hoot for the very first time, painting convention, for those that don't know, sometimes I talk about things and I realize that a lot of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. So there used to be a painting convention in Ohio called the um, Heart of Ohio Tall Painters, Hoot, um, it was my first convention, and Liz Garcia was in that class. And so um, I always <laughs> I always think of that every time I see your name. So fond, fond memories. Um, my life is a fractured flare. <laughs> oh, Chris, Chris, Chris. I totally get it. Go Bills. Yes. I should have worn something with the number three on it, right? That was terrifying, but yet so hopeful and exciting to see the recovery. Um, of that player. Amazing. Hello, Diane. So good to see you on. Hello, Paula. So good to see you too. 
All right, can't wait to see what you have in store for us this new year. Oh, Debbie Easton, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Even more so for my membership group. So, oh, thank you, Liz. I appreciate that. I was so nervous. <laughs> Yes, Denise, I know you were, but what I remember from Denise, I remember the class. I don't know why. Sometimes things stand out more, like from one class to another. Um, and I think it was either, I think it was either the aged hydrangeas with the old aged bucket and vintage kind of hydrangeas that were dried, um, or the, oh, what was the other one? Um the blue vase with the peonies. For some reason, I remember you from both of those classes more so than the first one. So, hello, Mickey from Georgia. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Karen. Wonderful to see you, be a part of your group. Thank you so much. Um, I miss Hoot too, right? Um, there are only a few conventions left, guys. They just announced one on the West Coast. Um, if anyone knows that information, feel free to pop it into the comments. But uh, Jamie Mills Price and um, who else did I see is teaching there? <laughs> Isn't that horrible? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, there used to be one on the West Coast. And, you know, when those things aren't attended, they're very expensive to run, very expensive to put on. So, I understand that they have to maybe do away with them, but I don't want to see the remaining ones done away with. Um, sadly, we no longer have Vegas Creative Paint uh, Painting Convention in February. Aged bucket for sure. Yes, yes, yes. I even know, I know where you sat, Denise. Left-hand side, middle of the room, toward the back. So, you know me, crazy. <laughs> I can remember where people sat. In fact, someone brought up something the other day and I said, and I remembered that and I was telling them my memory of it and I remember what I wore and what they wore, which is crazy. So anyway, hello, Debbie Sears. So anyway, hello, Marilyn. Red hydrangeas, yes. I remember that, uh, Liz, because y'all walked, everyone walked in, they're getting out their patterns or their uh, transfer paper with their pattern, thinking we're gonna put, because they walked into a blank canvas, <laughs> which usually does not happen. Um, oh, thank you, Janet. Yes, I, I would love to come to NET with next year's OKC, po uh, potentially, possibly moving dates. I will try and work NET in, um, but I was always in Taiwan teaching, and then um, during net time. So if you're not familiar with net, New England Traditions um, Painting Convention, it's in Massachusetts. And um, I was always in Taiwan. So I was ne never able to um, submit to teach. Um, there are a lot of online courses as well. You guys know there are a lot of groups that offer classes. Um, Audrey, I'm going to say her name wrong, her last name, I always say it wrong. But um, with coast to coast. Um, and I know Sue Potts, you're on. So if you want to pop that link in the comments, that would be awesome. Um, but Audrey Dijon, Audrey is amazing um, and has an online um, convention. I believe it's in April, spring, May, uh, March or April. Again, if you're in the comments, Sue, go ahead and pop that in so that people can see it. Um, I'm unable to participate this spring because of my schedule, but hopefully in the fall. So um, when is OKC next year? Cindy, it is always the third weekend, I believe, in October. Um, I'll have to I'll have to look and post that unless somebody else already does. Lisbeth Stahl, thank you so much. So so good to see you on, Lisbeth. She just posted in the comments the um, event that's going to happen on the West Coast. So let me just kind of put this out there. Not not as a just as a suggestion. Um I love this industry. I love to paint. I love the relationships I've built. I love the people that I've met. Uh, Lisbeth and I just did a special event at OKC, which was fantastic. Um, Y'all, if you want it to stay around, it has to be <laughs> attended. Um, and I read something with one of my friends this morning on Facebook and her husband had a stroke. 
And we had a lot of things going on with the holidays with people having COVID and having to quarantine. And so it kind of threw a monkey wrench into some of our plans. But at the same time, I just want you, we're not promised tomorrow, as you guys know. Um, and if you want to go, try and figure out if you can go, figure out a way to go, save to go next year if you can't go this year. I totally understand there are so many components that go into it, not just financially being able to attend, um, travel, being around that many people, roommate, you know, the expense of it all, I totally get. But if we want these things to stick around in our industry, we need to support them. And um, if nothing else, if you can't go, support it by sharing. Share it with your friends, share it with, um, you know, if you've got a group, if you've got a page, whatever, share it on your social media um, and let people know about it because that's the only way that these things are going to stick around. And I, for one, hope that they stick around. So, um, oh, and registration open today. I did see that. I wish I could go. <sighs> I'm teaching. So, yes, Lisbeth has a booth there. Um, several other people are teaching. Hello, Judy from South Louisiana. Oh, I miss going there. <laughs> so good to see you on. Oh, no problem. Showed up to, oh, Robin. I hope you're continuing to heal with your shoulder and how sweet of your daughter to come wash your hair. Got my hair did, so it's all. <laughs> and don't, when you go to the salon and they wash it and they blow dry it, don't you hate to wash it because you know that it's probably never gonna be blown out that way or curled that way or washed that way so absolutely so i love that lisbeth she just said the best way to support the industry is sharing and talking about wonderful events totally agree um and y'all know me i am one to share with everybody you know with with other teachers events with other um groups events with other things that are other membership groups for that matter um so we have to support them if we want to continue to have these designers working um, and putting things out there for these promoters and event planners to put these things out there. Um, so if you can't financially do it and be there in person, what you can do, social media is a huge, huge component. And it would certainly help those events if you could share. So, okay, let me get off my soapbox here. <laughs> Not that it's a soapbox. It's a it's a painting box, let's say that. Um, oh, right, Lisbeth, totally agree. Totally agree. And I have to say, with the five or six inches that I cut off, it was so much easier to fix my hair today. <laughs> so, hello, my dear sweet friend, Marlene. Um, <laughs> oh, good. I could just sit here and read y'all's comments, and we don't have to paint, but I have a lot to share with you guys today, so... Thank you, Janet Roach. So on Facebook, she just put the New England Traditions event. Um, and I'm not sure if somebody shared about the um, Art Waves Coast to Coast events that um, Audrey puts on. They're virtual, um, used to be held in Canada. Would have loved to have gone in person, but with things. So real quick, let's kind of switch gears off of that. Um, Cause like I said, I could go on and on. I have um, been very fortunate to be able to teach at many of these events throughout the country um, and have met, like I said, so many amazing teachers and friends and students and that become friends. Um, many of you guys are here that have taken classes. So uh, for me, and I appreciate that, but I just saw some Connie over on YouTube, Sonier. Is that how you say your last name? First time to join my live from East Texas. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm going to pop up real quick. Of course, I have to do my glasses because I can't see. And we just found out after making our uh, eye appointments that both optometrists, is that what they're called, no longer are there. So I've got to find a new optometrist because my glasses don't work. <laughs> it's actually my eyes. But okay. So on my website, I started this year um, wanting to connect and share a little bit more than I do um, even on a live or maybe something that 
um, maybe as minor or a tip or a trick or a technique or I don't know, whatever. It, it was just another avenue for me to be able to share and connect with you. So if you go to my website right there, the pop-up window that comes up right when you go to my website is um, for you to put your email address in if you want to receive emails from me. So I did one the 1st of January. I did another one this morning, um, letting people know that I have a live today. So um, go on over there later, not right now, and sign up for my newsletter. If you want to see what's going on, if you want to hear from me more frequently than you will, maybe weekly or every other week, haven't decided how often the Sundays in the studio with me are going to be, um, just because of my schedule. So, and it's ramping up, believe me. So, oh, Chris, thank you so, so much. She just put, Chris Avola put over on um, Facebook the link for uh, Coast to Coast events. I appreciate that. So, okay. So don't forget, Claudette, send me a message. Let me know what e-packet you want. And the first on Facebook that I saw, it might have been someone different, but what I see first, um, Sue Potts, let me know what e-packet you want and I'll get that sent to you. All right. You got an email from me this morning. Oh, thank you, Robin. Yes, yes. So that's my goal is to, you know, when things are happening, going on, I'm going to send out that newsletter. But I also just want to connect and share some things with you guys. Um, as they, Buffalo wins. Oh, awesome. Um, as things happen. Hello, Deb Antonick. So, anywho. And then Bonnie just posted OKC Palooza, October 21st through the 28th. Bonnie, so great to see you here. Okay, guys, so I should have brought my water in, <laughs> and I did not. I'm going to move some things, and then we're going to do um, our giveaways from the last live, which was, was it my penguin? I'm embarrassed to say I can't even remember. Um, I don't remember, but I had some giveaways, and I have some giveaways for today. So we are going to do that. Hello, Peggy. 3523 Buffalo wins. That's awesome. Hello, Jackie from Colorado. You're trying to get over COVID, Judy. I'm so sorry. It it ran through our family, um, thankfully. Not me. I've had it three times um, during the holidays. And it, you know, like I said, it kind of threw a monkey wrench into a couple of plans and um, things. But I just hope that, I don't know. I just... Not yet in Idaho. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, I just hope you guys stay safe and healthy and well. I started, after my third time getting it, I started a new vitamin regimen. And I think I'm going to put that in my next newsletter, the things that I've started, because I've never felt better. Um, I feel healthier, um, more aware, more alert, if you will, uh, sleeping better. So the vitamins are helping. And I just saw Linda Safranco's mom's watching us. So happy to have you here, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I usually don't because, um, Mary, I, I don't know if you ever comment, um, but I'm going to make sure that on the wheel for next week, I make sure that I put Linda's mom, Mary. Okay, just so that you can potentially win as well um, one of the giveaways. So, all right, we need the Bengals to win. They feel bad because of what happened. Oh, I know, I know. May have been the teddy bear. Oh, you're right, Sue Potts. It was the teddy bear. So let's scroll down to my other camera and let's do the giveaways. All right. So I had, oh gosh, one, two, three, five giveaways. Um, on the last live, which was the teddy bear. Thank you. Oh, Kim, I'm so glad it worked for you. Yes, Peggy, I will put my vitamin regimen in my next, um, in my next newsletter. Okay, so the brush cleaner preserver, the masters, this one has the bar of soap and the stain remover, which is called Kiss Off. Amazing. If you've not tried that, I have glitter everywhere. The Master's Brush Cleaner and Preserver. And the winner of that giveaway that came up on the wheel is Tara Ellis. And if I'm not mistaken, Tara, I think you're a Georgia girl. So, but private message me your mailing address and I will get that off to you. 
Okay. Oh, we'll do those next. Oops, I'm losing things. <laughs> so, the next thing I had was for one, two, three, four, five M square stencils. Now, if you're not familiar with M square, it's Moreau McTeer. Um, you can get these on my website. You can also find them at tracymoreau.net. So, five of those stencils goes to Armida. Armida, message me. I, I know I have it. I think I have it. Message me your mailing address and I will get these shipped off to you. Okay. Um, I did five since it was the holidays. So, and then we had, from our friends at Dynasty, we had some brushes. Um, these are the Micron. Love them for detail work. They're just, they're amazing. Um, and the winner of those, I was thrilled when I saw your name pop up because these are heading all the way over to France. To my friend Patrick. Patrick, over in France, these are coming your way. So I believe I have your info, but feel free to message it to me just to save me some time. I'm going to move those so that they don't get messed up. And then my friends at DecoArt gave me a water marbling kit. This comes with the tray, um, some sticks, five or six things of the paint. Um, paper to do water marbling. Now I've done a live on water marbling. You guys can see that on my YouTube channel. Um, but then DecoArt also has, if you go to DecoArt's YouTube channel, they have them as well. Um, but the water marbling kit goes to Mary Jane. Mary Jane Wells, message me your mailing address and I'm going to get this off to you. All right. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Alrighty. Oh, thank you, Virginia. I love the M2 stencils as well. So, alrighty. And then the last one I have is um, a journal that I bought when I was in Turkey visiting my brother-in-law. And I'm so excited my brother-in-law's coming to visit me tomorrow. I don't know if you're watching, David, but super excited um, that you're coming to visit. And I'm hoping, because I have a lesson with my group tomorrow night, I'm hoping that he will agree to come on and say hi to everybody. So anyway, I got this when I was in Turkey. Love, love, love it. Um, it's made in Turkey. It's wool, and it's just incredible. So the winner of that, Bonnie, 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 message me your mailing address. Oh, that's the wrong thing I wrote. Hello. You got the journal. Hello, I wrote that wrong. So, Bonnie, you have the journal. Message me and let me know your mailing address and I will get that sent out to you, okay? Now, let's move on real quick to our giveaways for this week. Um, the Turkish journal is awesome, Diane, but luck. Because <laughs> I know you're in the group. So, my membership group has a lesson tomorrow night. I just had this sitting there and I have to move it. Um, I have it for tomorrow night's um, lesson. So, any of my members that are on right now, you're getting a sneak peek as to um, one of the drawings for, um, oh, thank you, Bonnie. I'm glad you like it, for my membership group. So this is one of the drawings for um, January. And it is a scarf that's made in Turkey. I absolutely love it. In fact, I have one. Um, but let me just show you this. I, I love how painterly it is. So it's it's flowers, but it's not flowers. It's brush strokes of color. Um, oh, it, and it feels divine. It just is silk and beautiful and oh, so gorgeous. So <laughs> I'm going to fold that back up because I do not want it to mess up um, and get it away from here because I do not want paint on it. So... Let me move that out of the way. Okay, so giveaways for today. And all you have to do, um, especially if you're new here, like, comment, share, okay? Um, like, comment, share, and that's gonna enter you into the drawing. A lot of these are, are giveaways that I have 
extras of, that I'm purging my stash of, that companies have given me, um, especially companies that I love, like Dynasty and Decord and anywho. So that scarf is for a drawing for my membership group. So, and if you want any information about that, you can get that over on my website right there, Sandy McTeer Designs, and just hit that membership button and find out about what we do each month, um, et cetera. So next um, giveaways for this live, I have one, two, three, I have four stencils. So um, diamonds, buffalo check, polka dots, love, love, love this one. Um, so one winner for those. And then I have some Stampendous stamps. Okay, so this one is, what is this one? Verbi script and this cute little one that I thought I would use. I never did, I bought it and it's just been sitting in my stash. Um, and so this one is a tiny trailer, super cute. Um, it'd be cute just even in a background. So another winner for those. And then I started carrying these absolutely love, love, love. The clear glaze medium and the fast drying glaze medium, Josanya, one winner for this set of amazing mediums to help you paint. Um, I'm going to move those to the side. And then the last one is I picked some of my favorites. Um, so, and what I love about these Dynasty Black Gold brushes, first off, the quality is amazing. Um, I love the acrylic candle <laughs> because I will admit I am horrible about leaving my brushes in my water. So, hello, Cheryl. Good to see you on. And Debbie from Houston. Okay, so, um, uh, what is this? A three-quarter. This one's a half inch. I would say it's like a number 12, but it's a little bit longer than like a 12 flat. Um, love these. This flat top mop. Um, just love it. It's amazing. Um, my favorite size Mezzaluna, which is a small Mezzaluna. I use this for dry brushing. We're going to use it today. And what size is this one? A zero rigger. And then also these Tombow, um, knockout erasers. I have these on my website. They're amazing. I'll show you how to use them on the lesson today. Hopefully I'll remember. Um, so one lucky winner is going to get my favorite brushes and that knockout eraser, okay? All you have to do, like, comment, share, all right? So, yes, they're amazing, aren't they, Doris? Um, been busy cooking, <laughs> right? Well, I've been busy eating <laughs> with the holidays and everything. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I am, I always think, okay, I'm only gonna have one cookie and then 10 cookies later, but oh well. So, Oh, Lucy, no, no need to apologize. Happy that you're here. Okay, so we're doing finally, and if you got my um, <laughs> my newsletter that I sent out today, um, I I was procrastinating about this design. Um, and let me just tell you when designing, I usually tend to just go right into it. Um, I don't pick my palette first. Um, I just kind of think about where I want things to go. And then my pa my palette colors and stuff come after. I got lucky with this one because this is the fourth in the series. Um, so if you've not seen the others, let me show you real quick. We did spring tea. And then we did summer tea. And these um, e-packets are all available on my website. Again, right there. And don't forget when you check out on my website to put in those uh, three letters, all capitals, A-R-T, hit apply. If you don't hit apply, it's not going to uh, take your discount, but that will give you a discount, okay? And then autumn. And I just was just stuck. I was stuck on what I wanted to do and where I wanted this to go and what color palette I wanted to use. And I procrastinated, <laughs> um, which I'm very, very good at. So in the new year, like I said, my word of the year is consistency. I want to get better. 
Um, what is this cast in a shadow, right? Something's cast in a shadow on my, oops, my water basin. Um, I want to get better at not being a procrastinator and be more consistent. So, anyhow, <clears throat> um, winter tea. So, I have some really cool things to share with you guys today. I did a little prep before, just for time's sake. Um, but I went ahead and base coated another surface. This surface is from, let's see if I have it here, right there. This is from cdwood.com. Um, it's their scallop dome plaque, which is a, an awesome surface. Um, and I did all of the T um, pieces on the same surface using the same background color. So I'm not gonna go into too much about what I did with the background, um, but I did wanna show you the stencil that I used, which is their collage stencil. And also to, to give you guys, um, I don't know, just some inspiration on on using stencils in your designs, but when you look at a stencil going, oh, you know, you don't have to lay that there and use the whole stencil. Use pieces and parts, okay? And because it goes this way, doesn't mean that you can't turn it this way or turn it over for that matter. Now, with something with writing, which is not legible, um, you might wanna be careful about turning it and flipping it, but let me just show you how I'm gonna move that. Like I said, I've got a thousand and one things here. Um, warm white is what I used to stencil with. And so I'll just put a little bit of that. And if you guys don't know about these palettes, I get them on Amazon, but it is uh, Gray Matters paper palette. Absolutely love this palette. And then a stencil brush, so I'm using a half inch stencil pro. We'll load it up. And then the key to stenciling is, I typically don't do this. I have arthritis, I have a rod in my hand. It hurts my hand to do that. So I typically will do uh, the layer method. If I want it more um, opaque, I will continue to layer over and over and over the stencil, okay? Um, so I'm going to soft circular motion, counterclockwise, clockwise. When you feel like you have no more paint on your brush, put a little bit more pressure on your brush, okay? Change directions often, okay? So you see how it's uneven? It's a little bit brighter here, less there. Totally great. Pat yourself on the back when you get that. Um, in fact, you can take a paper towel or a baby wipe and wipe that down or even sandpaper um, and kind of knock it back a little bit. So what I did for all four of these designs was basically this. Just kind of let it go where it goes and not try to be real exact, precise um, with the design, okay? Now this is a CD wood stencil, like I said, and there is a part on here. <laughs> I'm gonna hold it right there. Every time I use it and see it, do you guys see the face? <laughs> do you see, almost like a Vegas showgirl, like she's got feathers on her head and her two eyes and her mouth, um, you know, in a big feather boa or something, I don't, every time I use it. Now, what I did differently with this and why I wanted to share it was on the other three designs, I think I pretty much kept the, the stencil up right. But on this one, I turned it and I did some of the um, quatrefoil little design here, that direction. And again, if it's too bright, just quickly take your hand and rub right over it, all right? Nothing exact, nothing precise, all right? And that's exactly what I did on here. Now, if you get it too bright, so this one's very muted, subtle, um, if you get it too bright, you just take your background color and paint a wash over the entire surface, and that will knock it back and take it down a notch, okay? So, what I did on here, um, like I said, I did a little bit of prep. Yes, the face. 
Oh, goodness. Um, okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way. You invented procrastination, Yvonne. Well, I think we are co-inventors. <laughs> okay. Um, so I did, let me just show you. Um, I print, I print my packet um, line drawings out on vellum. Um, I used to only do them on computer paper, but I have to tell you, I've kind of grown to really love having them on vellum. Um, and I'm gonna hold up and show you the vellum I get from Amazon, okay? So if you just put in, you can probably get it from them, I don't know, but I buy it on Amazon. Um, I think it's like 100, 120 sheets, some oh, 100 sheets, um, but I put these through my inkjet printer and it prints beautifully, okay? So, um, I never knew to consider pressure and the effect it has on, oh, yes, Karen. And we're, I have to throw that down. We're gonna be talking a lot about that. Pressure has so much to do with painting, um, guys. So does the movement of your wrist. So we're gonna touch on some of those things this year. Um, okay, so anyway, so let me show you. So I put my piece down did my line drawing, put transfer paper underneath it. But the cool thing about that is, you know, there are elements that hang over and go over items, like the branches. So if you don't wanna put those on in the beginning, you can always paint your design, lay your piece back down, transfer the elements that go over elements. Um, just a great way to, to have a pattern. Um, I know it's not new, but, it's new to me using it. <laughs> Let me say that because my tradition has always been just to print it off on computer paper. Now, when I was prepping this for today's lesson, um, or today's live, I should say, um, I went ahead and I was like, there has to be an easier way for me to stencil this design on and not have to mask things off. Now, the incredible amazingly talented Elizabeth Stoll, who's with us, um, I gotta see if I even have them handy. Let me see. Yes, I do. Okay, so she gave me these. Um, they're clear vellum post-it notes. You can get them on Amazon, okay? You can mask off areas. You can use painter's tape. Um, you can tear off computer paper, for that matter, or paper towels and mask things off. Um, these are fantastic, though. However, because I'm stenciling something, I thought I really want to mask off. So I went ahead and printed my line drawing on paper. And then I used an X-Acto knife and I cut out elements. Okay, so, but I kept the pieces I cut. So, who makes the vellum? Oh, Lori, it's... Um, let me grab it real quick. The vellum is paper junkie. It's my favorite. I've used several on, on Amazon and stuff, but this is my favorite. Okay. So Janet smells cheetah or tiger face. Absolutely. I see that too. Yes. Okay. So what I did this time was I decided there, I just want it to be easier. <laughs> so this is what I cut out. Okay. And so I can put this in place and let's get this one in place. So I just use an X-Acto knife, put it on my glass tabletop so that um, I could score it or cut it out right around the image. So that way, when I go to put on my stencil, which is this one, this is, I believe M275, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I can lay that in place and I kind of want it to follow the shape of that cup. Um, and this is knit slip stitch or something like that. <laughs> I'm not a knitter. I did knit when I was in sixth grade. My sixth grade teacher taught me how. Um, so I'm going to take that same stencil brush, load it up with the warm white, wipe it off, and I'm laying that stencil in place. I'm going to softly go over it, counterclockwise, clockwise, back and forth. If I want it to be more opaque, all I have to do is come back with a second layer, 
Okay, but I like that. Now, what's cool is that I did not get into my other areas. Okay, so let's lay that in place. And this is not in the instructions if you got the e-packet. Thank you so very much because y'all were crazy on the <laughs> getting this one this morning. I had to keep up um, trying to get that sent to y'all. But let's see, is that one there or is it this one? It's that one. Okay. <clears throat> so then I will lay this one and it has, um, oh, I got to move my mouse it keeps clicking on something hello um how did i have this one well it really doesn't matter it's the brocade so i'm going to put that there i'm going to get a different stencil brush okay so um this one is a three eighths and some prussian blue all right so like i said i already did this one because i'm showing you how i did that one um just to save time so some of that Prussian blue, work it into the tip of that brush, wipe off almost all that paint. Soft, really soft to begin with. And like I said, when you feel like it's going away, add a little more pressure. Oh, and I'll show you a trick too, because I know it's gonna happen on this one. So I have, um, <laughs> do you just see what I did? I did it on the paper. What a doofus. Hello. Let's do that again. Because the middle one's already done. So, take two. Soft circular motion. What I was going to say on that one, where there's a big space, you can always come back in and put something in that area. But look how cool, now that I lift this up, that... I have that design where I want it. Now, like up here, you could always come up and put a little something there, you know, just to continue that pattern. I'm gonna have shading down here so I'm not too fussed about the fact that there's not a lot of um, design down there. I'm also gonna have some shading here. So if you go over it all, it's gonna cover it up, okay? But it's exactly what I did to this one. Um, saved a little bit of time and did the shading on this handle because I'm going to show it on that handle. Um, but anyway, great way to mask off and use your stencils to get just a little small area of your, and then you can print this off again, you know, and use it as many times as you need to. Right? <clears throat> so let's move that out of the way. Okay. So, let's move in with our um, angle brush. That was your practice stenciling, right? <laughs> uh, bonjour, Patrick. Did you see I, uh, you won one of the drawings from the last giveaway? So, I will get that off to you soon. Uh, what color is in the background, Lynn? Um, let me look in the packet. It's either... Um, it's either oyster beige or bleach sand. I said you could either one will work. Okay, so on my 3 8 angle, my dynasty, I'm going to get a little bit wet. And then I'm going to, let me move that out of the way, get a little bit of Prussian blue on the toe of the brush. So hopefully you can see that there on the screen. A little bit of that Prussian blue. And we're going to float that color along the edge of that cup. And then just to soften the look so that you don't end up with a harsh line, not right here where the toe of the brush was, but on this side, just kind of tap that. And I'm using, uh, this is a medium soft flat top mop. Uh, well, it's a flat top brush, not really a mop, but I love it as a mop, okay? Um, I just got something really sticky on my hand, so let me get that off. So a little bit more. And again, as you're loading that brush, just a little on the toe, and then I'm gonna start right here, but then I'm gonna walk it over to the right. Well, hello, that's what's gonna happen when you're too close to your puddle of paint. So let's get a little bit on that toe and I'm gonna move down here. And then I'll walk it to the right just a little bit 
so it's not so dark. And don't be afraid to flip it over to get it on both sides. Where we're going to float that down that side and then right where it meets that top cup. The top of that middle cup, I should say. Okay. And then I'm going to reload it and then I'm going to walk out to the right just a little. And then I want to come right up underneath that magnolia petal. All right, let's dry that real quick. You're so welcome, Lynn. Um, the thing is, when you float that color on and then you go over it again, a lot of times it picks up your entire color that you just put on. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So I did the same thing on this cup, both sides along that bottom. Um, but let's take care of that since we have that on the angle brush. We're going to take care of this, um, what is this? It's a saucer. We're gonna go up underneath that cup, on that side of the cup, a little bit in the back. Don't be afraid to use your fingers, okay? And I'm gonna switch angle brushes. I'm gonna switch to a quarter inch uh, just to have a little bit better control. Um, oh, thank you, Becky. And let me tell you guys too, especially if you're new here, um, I'm kind of a one-man show. <laughs> so if you um, ask a question and I don't answer it, I promise I will go back and look and answer it. Um, but I, it's hard to kind of look up and see all the, the questions and the comments coming through. Um, I greatly appreciate them. It's just hard for me to... Um, to look up and also share and show what I'm trying to share and show. Okay, so up underneath the saucer, that, what is that? Like the little underneath part, um, I wanna say pedestal, but it's not. It's just the bottom of that saucer. We're gonna put a little bit of that right between the two. And again, just kind of soften that out. It'll separate it. I've got a little bit there. Anything you go over, like out of the line or whatever, just use your background color as an eraser, okay? Um, so a little bit more of that Prussian blue, fantastic color. I started using it a lot last year um, and fell in love with it all over again. It was one of my favorite colors when I painted in oils a lot. So, okay, now this is just to kind of give like that inset part of the uh, saucer. So think of like a C the letter C. You're just gonna do a little C stroke and it needs to be darker. I want this to show up a little bit more. So a little C stroke, and then we need a backward C over here. And I kind of feel like that got really big, like long, okay? So that little inset, then I'm going to put some more on the toe of that brush and then walk it out to the right just a little bit because I do want to put a little C stroke right here and a little one right here. I think I need a little bit more paint. Again, don't be afraid to use those fingers. Great little mops. We'll soften that. Okay. Then come back, pick up a little bit more on the toe of that brush. And we're going to come right in here and float that Prussian blue right on this handle. Oh, thank you, Linda. I love the colors on this one too. I, again, while I was procrastinating and thinking about where I wanted this design to go, I knew I wanted it to be more winter than Christmas. Um, and I think that's kind of what gave me a little bit of mental block, you know, cause I wanted to fill it with holly. <laughs> um, and holly is, you know, is a winter plant, but we associate it a, a lot of times with Christmas. So I didn't want it to lead lean towards too much Christmas. I wanted it to be more winter. So now don't worry if your float goes further out than where you want it on the handles because I'm gonna show you a trick. 
and that one did. And that's why I set it. Um, I just wet my brush a little. I'm just gonna take away that line. Certainly don't want a line. And I'm gonna get out some Payne's Gray. So a lot of times when I float my color on, I will do um, I will do it twice, especially if I want it darker. So let's dry that. And that one, funny enough, I made straight on the pattern. It goes in. Hello. Okay, so a little bit more. Um, so Prussian blue and a touch of Payne's Gray. And I prefer uh, the Media Payne's Gray. They have Americana or whatever brand you use. Um, I just prefer this. It's transparent. It's beautiful. It works beautifully on every single project just about that I do. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go back to that handle. I want it to be a little bit darker right in here. Like on the inside of that handle. Okay. Yeah, a lot better. And then let's dry it. And I'll show you how to come back and fix that other side up. You just come in with your angle brush. Load it with that warm white. Karen Knox, I agree, it's the best, isn't it? Payne's Gray is a, a great color. Um, it's not as harsh as black, and so I think that's why I use it a lot. Um, soft black is another great color. I used that for some time, but that Payne's Gray is just, it's just the best. Okay, so warm white on that brush. I'm just coming on the other side, and if it gets over a little, that's okay, because what's what it's going to do is it's going to help bring that color together, not be real separated. However, I'm going to show you how I made it even more less separated find my brush. So with my zero rigger, um, get a little bit of water. Some, or you can use the Josanya, you know, glazing medium, fast dry glazing medium, the flow medium is amazing as well. Um, and I'm just going to load that up with a little bit of that warm white. And I'm just going to swipe it on and then use my finger. And let me tell you why I love this. And one of my friends recently that I had the pleasure of hooking up or catching up with on the phone, um, Diane, and she goes, what I absolutely love about what you do is it's not cookie cutter and it looks painterly. And when you use your fingers, you can help make it look painterly. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, so... A little dry brush here, or a little stroke here is going to help make it not look so exact or precise or cookie cutter. Okay, now let me get some of that background color because I wanna show you that you can come in with that background color and any place that you went outside the lines or maybe your handle got too big, you can Take away, use it as an eraser. I even use my fingers to soften that. Um, right here, I do like on my original how there's a little bit of a hump there. So I'm going to come in and put that back in. Okay, so see how that just notched out that little area? Love it, love it. Now, this one is a little darker than this one. I prefer a really good shading color. I like for it to be nice and um, strong, but if it's too dark for you, I'm going to show you a trick, a little bit of water, again, that warm white on the angle brush, but I'm not worried if it goes everywhere. Okay. You can go on the toe, the heel, the flat of the brush, and you're just going to paint a wash over it. Just a wash over it, soften the look, and it will tone it down. Okay. All righty. Oh, Karen, you're frozen. I'm frozen. <laughs> um, oh, cute. Um, so maybe refresh. Okay. 
Now for the green, I'm going to come in with some plantation pine, which is my go-to darker green, but it's not real dark. Um, and you can use like black green, um, but when you have a color like Payne's Gray that you can mix with things, it's it's your answer. Let me just say that. So a little plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray, work it in both sides of the brush. And I'm going to float that color right down that handle. And just work that up. Take your mop or whatever you have and just kind of soften that look. Okay. Now, I want that to be a little bit darker, especially right there. Almost like you can see the inside curvature of that um, handle. So I am going to come back. I might need to dry it. That kind of worked. <laughs> so let's dry that. I went outside the line there. Again, background color is going to take care of that. Those things used to bug me like nothing else. And I'd be like, I have to repaint the whole thing because that one little thing. Um, don't let that stop you. Use your background color as an eraser. Oh, thank you, Karen. So, you know, a lot of um, a lot of things I share with you guys too. I it's trial and error is how I learned it. Um, teaching myself how to paint, continually teaching myself and educating myself how to paint. Because, like I always say, if you feel like you know it all, it's time to put the brushes and the paint up and move on to something else. Because um, we will never ever know it all. There's so much to learn. And so many ways to do things. So, okay. Now I'm going to come in with um, some of that laurel is what I used for this color. The background of that um, cup, I should have told you and I didn't, um, is DecoArt Laurel. It's a brand new color last year. Um, great color. It's kind of a mossy subtle muted green um, absolutely love it so a little bit of that on the toe of the brush a little bit of warm white let's work that in I could have switched to the rigger but I'm just going to use this I'll swipe it across my paper towel and I'm just going to swipe a little bit of this color on to kind of mimic that handle soften it okay now let's go back to that 3 8 angle. Yes, Debbie Matthews. She uses that a lot, doesn't she? Warm white's a great color. Um, it wasn't a color that I used often um, until Tracy Moreau. And so, I don't know, I just was like, oh, I wanna see if that works instead of um, titanium white. Fell in love with it. Just like Asphaltum for y'all that watch Tracy as well. Okay, so on the green cup, I did use some plantation pine for my shadow, but I want you to see how bright it is. So I'm just gonna do this one side. So see how it's dark and it's darker than the laurel, but it's not as dark as I wanted it. So let's dry that. It's a transparent green um, and again, can go bright. So a little bit of plantation pine, little touch of Payne's gray. That is my go-to to make my leaf color. Um, my green's darker. And then let's just walk it out a little bit. Okay, so much better, right? Just soften that out. Um, so Patrick asked about the medium soft flat top mop. It is... You could put your eyeshadow, not you, Patrick, but <laughs> I could put my blush on, my eyeshadow. It's a nice, soft, bristle brush. Um, I do have some mop brushes that are small. The majority of them usually have a, either a dome or they're oval. Um, I don't know. I just love the flat area. 
and being able to see where I'm going. And if I, like if I do that, I don't know how much of that's being covered. Whereas on this, because it's flat, I can kind of hold that off to the side and see that I'm only on that edge. Um, it's just my brush that I've loved to use for mop, a mop brush. So again, little plantation pine, little bit of paints gray. Again, a little bit of moisture just to get that paint to move. And we're going to float that, we're gonna, we're gonna float that color. Need a little bit more paints gray. Right along that edge. And then again, use your mop to kind of soften it. And then if I pull from here and go that way, I'm going to mess up what's wet. So always a good idea just to dry it before you move on. Then you don't lift it. Can't find plantation pine. Forest green will work. Forest green will work, definitely. Okay, so we're going to float that right where it meets that cup soften that out i'm going to turn it around i used to not flip my pieces and actually i was kind of a staunch believer that there you didn't need to move your pieces or turn them around and then i realized that hello it's so much easier when you do and you can get that um exactly where you want it and because camera i don't want to impede the view of the camera. Oh, look what I'm doing. I'm getting a line right there. Um, I have to turn my piece so that I can keep my hand out of the way. But, you know, what I used to do, especially when I teach, is to show how your wrist can help you move that brush around. But hello, whatever works and makes it easier and keeps you painting, I'm all for that. There we go. Got a little dark there. All righty. Yep, got real dark right there. See that dark line? I'm going to wipe that off. Because while it... There we go. It'll just keep, you know, sticking its nose out to me and wanting me to fix it. So I'm going to fix it now. There we go. Okay, so let's rinse that out. I'm gonna pick up, and I rinsed it out because I um, had it go over the entire brush. In fact, I should be using my 3 8 angle instead of a quarter inch. Um, but I did a little bit right along the top of that as well, right along that top rim. And I'm gonna have a line there anyway, so it just will help kind of offset that line. Let's rinse that out. And I see that I need to make this a little bit darker. Paints gray is the best color for shading. Most color has, yes, it is my go-to. Hello, Linda, so glad you found me finally. <laughs> so um, a little Prussian blue, and I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny touch of Paints gray. Again, I need a little bit more water in my brush. And I just want this shadow right here to be a little bit darker than what it is. And then soften that out. Again, that's Prussian blue with a little bit of Payne's gray. Okay, much better. In fact, I need to put a little bit of that underneath the cup. The side of the cup. I know I have that in my directions to put Payne's Gray with it. A little bit underneath that saucer. Alrighty. So I obviously got paint there. And remember where I said I went out the line? Go there. Let me show you a trick too. When you're painting in your design, I tend to, things grow, right? 
like miracle grow. It just, my flowers get bigger, my leaves get bigger, um, your cups might get bigger. So a, th a thing to think about when you're, when you have a brush fully loaded with paint. So let me just do like that. If I start right here on the edge with all that paint on my brush, a lot of it's gonna go over the, the line. Start in the middle, brushing your paint on, and then work your way to the edges, okay? Um, it will just help keep the shape of things, but I also don't get real fussed about if it goes over the line. Um, my number one rule in painting is if you like it, leave it. If you don't, figure out a way to fix it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that Zero Rigger with a little bit of that Prussian Blue, tiny touch of Payne's Gray. And right in here, I'm going to paint in this little section, which is gonna help make my cup look more dimensional. You can see the inside of that cup. I've got a little sliver of it over here. And I already started up here a little sliver there. I have a tiny little sliver here between this petal that you can't see that goes into the cup. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> um, okay, and then I have also a little bit here. as well. Okay. So let me dry that. Just make sure everything is dry. Okay, let's do a little bit of outlining and then we'll move on to our design up here. So I'm gonna use that Zero Rigger and I'm going to take some, you can use the um, warm white or titanium white. I love, <laughs> this is my favorite um, brand. This is our, um, it's a deco art brand. It's my favorite line. Absolutely would use it on everything. And because it's an acrylic, you can intermix it. You can mix it like I'm doing with the Payne's Gray with my Plantation Pine. Um, but with a damp brush, I'm going to pick up that white, and I want to pull, let me get a little bit less, I want to pull a white line right across the front top of this cup. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the front of this saucer. And so it's noticeable. It's gonna help give it a little bit of a rim. I find it easier to pull the line down than across. But the thing is, if you go over, if it gets too big, just take a small brush, flat brush, and take away anything you don't want, you know, if it gets too wide, okay? So, then we have white along the top here. I'm gonna dry that because I know I'm gonna get my hand right in it. Thank you, Ronnie. So good to see you on. Happy New Year. Oh, Claire, you're gonna love them. Those uh, clear post-it notes are amazing. Such a brilliant idea. When Lisbeth uh, still shared them with me, I was just like, oh my gosh, what are those? My husband is the post-it king. He he writes post-it notes. And if you got my newsletter today about writing notes and lists, I put some really good tips in there for you guys. Um, okay, that's going to be covered up, so I'm not too worried about that. But I'm going to take that white, that titanium white, and I'm going to put a little highlight here, maybe there. just to highlight that a little bit more. I feel like this got really blue. So I'm gonna put that on and I'm actually just gonna swipe it.
Okay, now to that laurel, that laurel green. Get my brush wet, get a little bit of that on there. I am gonna pick up a tiny touch of the warm white. The warm white is more muted than the titanium white. So the titanium white's gonna make it a little bit brighter. The warm white's gonna make it more muted. All right, so along the front of this cup, where it meets that top cup. And this will clean up a lot of like, oh, I got too wide there, or, you know, my um, green is a little wonky there. You can make your, that border on that cup as wide as you want to. And then let's rinse that out. Plantation Pine, Payne's Gray. Mix that together, not down to one color. You don't need a palette knife. Both colors on the brush, roll it around on the brush. And we're gonna put that underneath the handle. Actually, let me turn this so I can see it. Exactly where it needs to go, right there. Again, that's just what helps with that dimension. Let me get a little more Prussian blue there. All right, so let's make sure everything is dry. <laughs> Claire said she brought, bought enough of those post-it notes to share, right? Do the media paints need as much water? They do not. They're very fluid. In fact, they are fluid acrylic. Um, they're transparent, which I would say probably the the traditional way of decorative painting. You want an opaque paint for the most part, um, but the fluid acrylics, you can make opaque. You, I layer them, layer them, layer them. They're just incredible. Like I said, my favorite. Okay. So, trying to see where I need a little bit of that white, I'm gonna highlight that and that, and then let's soften that with the mop. And my mops, when I wash them, I, again, just the tips of them will, a little bit of soap and water or hand sanitizer, um, shape them back in their shape and, all right, let's see here. Um, Number 10, number eight, flat, dry brush. You can use your mezzaluna, I'm gonna show you both. But I'm gonna load that up, you see that on my palette, and then swipe it across my paper towel. And then I'm just going to gently pull a couple strokes, almost like a little light um, is hitting that ceramic cup, just to get a little bit of a highlight. But you can also use the mezzaluna, which I love. Small, medium, large, extra large. There's four in that set. Um, but a little bit of white and wipe it off. And you probably don't need to wipe as much off like when we dry brush the leaves and stuff. I'm going to wipe it off more. But this one, I'm going to load it up. Just swipe my brush and look how much more of a... Uh, dry brush you get there. Okay. Love that. So I'm actually going to add that here, here. You don't see it on the stone, um, kind of those stoneware glasses as much as you do on that green one. But. Alrighty. Let's take care of our leaves and my mezzaluna brushes. I wash with hand sanitizer. Um, especially if I'm moving from one color to the next in my design. So on the leaves, I used uh, antique green. So we're gonna get a little bit of that out. I already have plantation pine and Payne's gray. Small brush, like a number four. Just got here. Oh, thank you, Diane. Um, so antique green, it's yellow green, really pretty. We're going to do all of this before we do the magnolia, okay? Because it's sitting on top of all that. 
So a little bit more of that antique green. Base coat in those leaves. And magnolia leaves, um, for Christmas, a lot of times, I live in the South. Um, if you don't know, I live in Georgia. And we have magnolias everywhere. And, um, hello, let's get that painted in a little bit better, Sandy. Um, I used to take the leaves and spray paint them gold and use them in decorations and stuff. Um, but I love that one side has that green and then the other is that brown. Super pretty. Okay. So quarter inch angle. I'm going to go into my plantation pine first. And I say first because I layer paint. I am going to put that plantation pine down first just to get that shape of that leaf. Make sure it's how I want it. Let's go along the bottom. So I'm doing that bottom edge of the leaf and right at the base, at the base of that leaf where it meets other things like the petals. the other leaf, okay? Uh, Debbie Sears, I use whatever I can get my hands on. <laughs> um, this is, I think I must get it at Walmart, but usually I get the Germex. Um, what's this one? This one's a little bit, oh, this is Germex. The other one I have on my other station is very watery. I don't like it. It was kind of a generic brand. Okay. Now that I have that initial shading on, I'm going to go back to Plantation Pine, Touch of Payne's Gray. And work that in on the toe of the brush. And I'm just going to intensify that shading. And you can use the mop if you want to, just to kind of soften it. between those leaves and then again right along the bottoms of those leaves. Alrighty. I'll give you guys whiplash flipping that thing around. Oh, thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. Now, right down the center of that, so the toe of that brush is right along that center and I'm just going to pull a little stem down or a vein, not a stem, hello. Pull a little vein right in the center of those leaves, and then we're gonna highlight them. A lot of these are covered. Um, you can barely see. That one's completely covered, right? But the thing is with painting them initially is what you want it to show through like it's been painted. Um, so that's why I went ahead and left all the stuff over it off um, and we'll fix it up. Okay, so a little bit of that um, laurel I'm gonna use on the highlighted part of those leaves. Now it's gonna be kind of dusty and mossy looking and that really wasn't what I was going for. So I'm gonna show you um, what to put over it. Okay, let's dry that. And I mean, you can use a hair dryer. This is my heat it tool, my Rager heat it tool. I'm out of stock right now, oh my goodness. And I ordered it and they're out of stock. They're out, out, out. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of the um, antique green, a little bit of warm white. And let's just kind of brighten this up with a little yellow tone. And my fix is always to backtrack. So like on here, if you're like, oh, that's too in your face, too bright, backtrack and use um, 
a wash of plantation pine over it and it will tone it down. Make sure my hand's out of the way. Just a little bit. And those, again, don't even see that leaf. So I wouldn't even worry about it, but again, it's, it's going to be seen. Parts of it. Now I'm going to take that same highlight color, and on the opposite side of that vein, I'm going to put in a little bit of that brighter color. Alrighty. And then, again, I wanted these to look like magnolia leaves, so I came back with some asphaltum. Yes, and you know, magnolia leaves do have a kind of a dusty, um, shiny, they're really, really shiny, um, especially when you wax them, when you use them for decor and stuff. Just, I love them. But I love that um, antique green and a little bit of warm white over that laurel. Again, layering those colors just makes such a big difference than using one color and being done. Um, okay, so a little bit of asphaltum, and I want a damp brush, well, just a little bit of asphaltum, and I'm going to very loosely float that color on, very, very loosely, right at the base. Can you see my palette there, how little I have? Very, very little. Again, that asphaltum over that plantation pine, especially over that antique green, is going to give it such a, um, a really pretty natural look. So I'm picking up some plantation pine, some Payne's gray, and I want to come up and over that handle, handle, up and over the rim. Hello, Sandy. Okay, I think that's it on the leaves. You could do veins down them, you know, like on, typically on a magnolia leaf, just that deep vein right down the middle is what I paint. Thank you, Connie. On camera, the laurel almost looks like, yes, silver sage was a great color. Um, I don't even know if it's still in, um, still being made, but really pretty color. And so on trend right now, guys, because the, um, I saw a car that looked almost exactly like that shade um, of laurel. Alrighty, let me get a sip of water there. Okay, let's take care of the greenery. Um, I'm going to do it two different ways and show you. So I'm using my Zero Rigger. Now, a rigger is like a liner, but it has a chisel edge and it can go flat. Okay. Whereas a liner is made for it to kind of come right to a nice little tip and you can do detail work. You can do detail work with this. But the great thing about it is it can also go flat and give you that chisel edge. So water in my brush. I'm going to load some plantation pine, Payne's gray, nice dark rich color first. And then I do want to come here and flatten it on my palette. Okay, typically with a liner, I'll roll it to the tip, which I know with a good liner, they say you don't have to, but I still do. It's just habit. Okay, now coming into my greenery, let me zoom in just a little more so that we can see this. Okay, so it's got that nice flat chisel edge, and I'm going to kind of slide on that chisel edge. I need more water. See how that did not come off? <laughs> it's a little bit more water in my brush. Flatten that. And then I just pulled out tiny, tiny little evergreen sprigs. And I'm showing you this because this is, this is what I did on my piece. And it kind of surprised me because I typically use an angle brush for my evergreen, um, which if you watch me on the lives, you probably have seen me do before. Um, 
So let's just get those, and I want to flatten that out to get that nice flat chisel edge, but it gives you a really nice thin little evergreen sprig. Come down here. And again, flattening that brush. And I like to start at the uh, center stem and go out. I feel like that um, edge is a little bit thinner than if you start here. Wherever you touch your brush, usually you're gonna get a little bit thicker line. So pulling that out, nice, thin, airy, little evergreen sprig. Okay, do I have any more on that side? No. Okay, let me show you with the angle brush. So I would use a quarter inch angle for this size. Oh, Peggy, I would love to see that. Painted on canvas would be awesome. Okay. Oh, you're so welcome, Patrick. I will get that um, out to you soon. And good night. What time is it in France right now? Six hours ahead? Okay, quarter inch angle. I can do the same thing. And this one I think comes, so I slide on that chisel edge. And then I'm gonna slide on the chisel edge to make those evergreen sprigs. Now, sometimes, it gets a little heavy-handed because of the bristles. So look, it's a little bit fluffier, a little thicker, but I love the airiness of this. Um, so again, work with what works best for you and your project. Get a little bit more. And I don't have these drawn out, so let me look here and see. So I have one there, I have one here. I've got one there. And then this one comes down over the cup. Okay. So we're going to pull those out. This one I have right over that leaf. That leaf kind of, you know, is covered up, so. My hand right in the way. So that's plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's gray. Alrighty, so I'm digging both, but again, I truly love that look. Um, canvas, I would probably use um, 11 by 14, maybe. All right, let's go back to that rigor. I'm gonna rinse that out. Some antique green and some warm white. Hello, I just went right into the top of my warm white. Big no-no. I'm gonna work that in. Again, you want water in that brush just to get that to flow right off, but make that brush flat. And then again, just using the very, very chisel edge of that brush. Pull some of those colors in. Get a little bit of a highlight. A little bit, I'm gonna use a little titanium white. I want this a little bit brighter. There we go, but I still need more moisture, more water. Not that much. <laughs> Which leads me to, when you put water or something in your brush, it's always best to go to your palette just to see if you've got too much. Okay, so again, really pretty little highlight on those. With your angle brush, same thing. You can, let me zoom in, even more, come on. There we go. Okay, so with that angle brush, you can pull the opposite direction and try not to hit every single 
um, needle. It's random. A little bit more white. It's going to look much better if it's more uh, random. than trying to hit every single thing. And it's gonna make it a little bit fuller. Okay. Oh yeah, loving those. Okay, and then we'll turn that. In fact, I do have a lesson on YouTube um, where I did evergreen sprigs, and I showed you how I used an angle brush um, to do those. So again, just I'm pulling, I'm sliding on that chisel edge. Think of it like you're ice skating. When you ice skate, everything moves at the same rate, right? If you go back, you're going to get wider and you're going to fall if you're ice skating. So think of it like everything is riding on the tippy tips of those bristles. Okay. So we'll rinse that out. Um, a, 10 by a 10 by 20 canvas would be really pretty, Lucy. Um, it might be a little too long. However, you could elongate the pattern and put, you know, winter and tea, higher, lower. Um, I always love to show, well, not on purpose, but mistakes. So let me zoom out and show you one that I made. But I was not repainting it. So let me just tell you that. <laughs> Okay, so I did this one. Now what I want you to notice is how high my design went. When I was sketching it out and drawing it out and um, I didn't even realize it till I was done, how much space was left here. So when I did the line drawing, center it. Center it to where you want it. So winter's a little bit lower, tea's a little bit lower. Um, and I don't have as much space down here, okay? Um, it was just me not centering it correctly. So, <gasps> what is that? Is that asphaltum? Goodness gracious. I'm gonna get my mezzaluna, a little bit of hand sanitizer. Just a little. Just to kind of move it. You guys probably saw that, huh? I didn't even see that. Okay, let it dry. Warm white right over it. And I'm impatient, so I'm just going to put it right over. Okay, let's come back up here. Right back to that rigor. Rigor brush, water. And, <laughs> oh, I love that. Can you zoom in on the greenery? Yes, Wendy, let me zoom in because I'm going to do the branches too. So, okay. So a little bit of asphaltum. I lose my palette when I do that. So I'm going to try and remember to come over and get some of that palette in there for you. Um, let's go ahead and put out some primary red. And I need a little bit more warm white. <clears throat> okay, so Payne's Gray, Asphaltum, same brush, got water in my brush, I'm just going to mix that together, again, doesn't have to be down to one color, I'm brush mixing, and I like the variation you get when you brush mix, versus sitting there with a the palette knife and, and putting it down to one, what the heck, ah, it's like, why is my palette not moving, there's water underneath. Okay, so with my little twigs, which I already did, Asphaltum, Payne's Gray, and some of these go over the evergreen sprigs, so like there. That goes over, that goes under, this goes over that leaf just a little bit, and so you can put these things back in. This one has... Um, branch there, a branch that I see right here, right back over that, and 
Sorry, I gotta turn it again because I know I'm gonna put it in the wrong place. You could lay your pattern back down, um, but this one is gonna go right between there. And I had that go right over the handle, which my evergreen sprig got a little big over the handle. Again, I don't. I, it does not bother me. If you want it exact, you can lay your pattern back down and go over the line drawing that I have in the packet. Um, but things like that, I'm just gonna improvise and put those on. Okay, rinse that out. I'm gonna take the handle of my brush into the red paint and we're going to paint these berries. Probably should do this last because I'm gonna get my hand into it, we know, right? But hopefully not. So you can circle the handle of that brush around. You can use a stylus if you want to. And if, oh, that one was white, hello, Sandy. If you wanna make them smaller, do a couple of dots and then do the small one where you want it. So I always start where my big dot is gonna be first. And then I'll do a dot, a dot, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so a little different than my original, but I like it, so I'm gonna leave it. That's my rule. So little one there, little one there. And I typically don't draw the pattern on for where I have berries because you might you might wanna move it um, or it might not cover all of the line drawing. So those are easier just to kind of pop in here and there where you want them instead of following a pattern. So we've got one there. And I did the red, finished everything, and I'm like, oh, it just needs something. And I just popped in a couple of white berries here and there, and it really, it really helped. Um, okay, let's see. All right, let me dry that before I get into it. That'll give me a chance to, I just used that little Mezzaluna hand sanitizer trick last night. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it works wonders, doesn't it, Melissa? Bye, Ann. Thanks for popping in. Hi, Kathy. All right, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off the handle of the brush and go into the titanium white. You can use the warm white um, if you want to, but I'm gonna use that titanium white. And I'm going to load it on the handle of that brush, but then I wanna dot it twice because I don't want these real big. And so I have one there, there, and there. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. And I have just one up there, kind of a little errant berry. There, there, and there. And then I have one right there. Okay. And then let's dry that and move on to the... <laughs> I think the star of this show is the magnolia. Now, any berry that doesn't have a stem, you'd wanna go back and add a stem in. You can highlight those stems as well. I did not, um, but you can come in with some asphaltum and a little bit of warm white. And just kind of a little sketchy brush stroke over it to you know to highlight that. Nothing, nothing major. They don't have a lot of detail. Okay. So, but you know, on something like here where it's over the greenery, you might want to just highlight it a little bit. Little asphaltum, a little bit of warm white, but not over the whole branch, just here and there. Okay, 
Now I did use the quarter inch angle with a little bit of Prussian blue, just a touch. And I don't know if those are dry enough, but let's see. I put just a little bit of blue on those white berries, just to give them a little shading. And then on the red ones, a little tiny dot of white. Okay, very, very little. Just a little highlight. And if your brush is too big or if you, um, you know, you can use a little stylus or a toothpick for that matter. I don't want the dot, the little highlight to be as big as our berry. And then I did a little Payne's Gray dot on the white berries. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little dot. All righty. Let's go on to this, um, you know what, before we move on to the magnolia, let's go ahead and do the lettering. So what I did on the letters um, is I did warm white initially, but I came back and I added the titanium white on because I liked how that pulled the brightness from the flower um, on the edges in, whereas this is a little more muted. So I'm gonna use, this is a number two, you can use a number two or a number four flat. And let's just do a little bit of um, shading on these letters. And so I'm going to get very wet into some Payne's Gray, move it somewhere, somewhere else on your palette. Get this nice and inky. Okay. And you can take, hello, a piece of paper and kind of judge and see how dark it's gonna be uh, before you go on. But I just use that flat brush. You can use an angle brush. It will take longer. I hope I don't get into those. I hope they're dry. Um, but I'm just going to pull that right alongside the right side of those letters underneath. It's just an easier way to do some shading on those letters. And if you get too wide, you can just wipe off your brush, kind of come in and straighten that out a little if you need to. But I love to do drop shadows, which of course we're gonna do. And this is exactly how I do them. See, like there's a little too wide. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And because it's so faint, I could always go over it with the background color if I need to tone it down. Okay, but it just lifts those letters up and off that surface. And I love that. And I love that I don't have to use a liner brush or the rigger. I can just come in and do that little shading. Okay. Now, I, I always do one layer on my letters, do the shading, and then come back in with your color. So I would use titanium white, and I'm not going to do all the letters. I'll just show you that you can come back in with that rigor brush and the titanium white. And this will help you fix up anything that maybe went over the letter with that shading, um, with that Payne's Gray, or if it got a little wide, you can always come in and fix that up. So warm white to begin with, 
do your shading, and then come back with titanium white. That's just gonna bring that brightness from that flower out. Okay, and have it a little bit brighter than the rest. So, let's dry that. Aw, thank you, Peg. I try. Hi, Margie. Actually, you're watching the live. <laughs> Unless you're on YouTube. And if that red thing is all the way over to the side, um, to the left, then you are probably watching the replay. Okay, let's go on to our flower. So I can already tell I need some shading. The color that I did um, on my flower is Payne's gray and a little bit of white. Warm white or titanium white, doesn't matter. I believe I used warm white. Um, but here where I got over that petal too much, I'm gonna bring that right back down. Okay, and notice how I did all of the outer petals first, and then we'll take care of the inner petals next. But I'm gonna use that quarter inch angle with some Payne's Gray on the toe of the brush only. And I wanna come in and float that color. Let me show you my palette. So it's on the toe of that brush only. Work that in. If you can't tell, angle brushes are one of my favorite brushes to paint with. Absolutely love them, okay? Now, when you float that on, don't be afraid to use that mop to kind of soften it out. But just do a little loose floating. You need moisture in your brush to get that to come off, to float right off. So if it's not moving, a little tiny touch of water or medium. Again, soften that out. This is just Payne's Gray. Initially, when I started, you know, kind of coming up with this flower and designing it, and um, anytime I feel like I'm losing the shape of it or I want to try and keep the shape of something, I will, um, I'll put in my shading first, even though I know I'm gonna have to redo it, okay? So in the packet, you'll definitely, if you got the e-packet, you'll see that I did that. And I don't worry about the flip, okay? You could go underneath the flip if you want to now, but it's just, um, it's just in the way. So I typically will go over things that are in the way and then come back and fix them up, but I've got to fix this petal because it is not right. Let's see. There we go. I made it darker so I can see it. Okay. Now I'm going to take some of that Payne's Gray, a little bit of Plantation Pine on the toe of that brush. I want to come right up underneath this petal. Let's make this nice and rich and dark. Again, it puts it into that, um, into that cup. Okay, quarter inch angle. White on the toe of the brush only. And I'm not gonna start there because I'll get into that green. And I'm just going to kind of pity pat float this color on. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can get that on. You can do that with the angle brush and then take that small brush, like a number four or number two with nothing on it. And you kind of just pull that down a little bit or you can take that number two and start at the edge and pull that down. But see how it keeps that shading? Um, I like both ways and I flip-flop between both ways. But the majority of the time, I think I do use that angle brush, especially on those tighter little petals.
use that finger to soften the soften the look. A little bit more white. I'm going to go back to that angle brush. <laughs> Okay, so going back to the angle brush on the toe of the brush only with that white. And again, just nice, loose little float of color right along that edge. And I, when I do it, I'm kind of doing a little motion, almost like a little C. Okay, so just to keep it from going straight, it has to be like that. I, I like that painterly edge so that little motion is going to help you get there no apology necessary pig glad you're here okay and that's underneath there so i do want to do i think maybe the top of this one Right there, yep. Okay, now what's cool is come in with that angle brush, a little bit on the toe, and right up underneath. Oh, let me move this. Right up underneath that flip. Flip back in and then just kind of soften it. But look what that just did to that petal. Made it dimensional instead of just flat. Now we're going to brighten it up because, of course, it's still too gray. Um, but coming short of that petal, floating that Payne's gray on to make those edges look like they flip up. And I love that on a magnolia, how those flip up. Okay. And I have a little one back here. Where else? Oh, right here. Okay. And this petal's way gray, way too gray. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with that small mezzaluna. You can use the flat brush as well, but that small mezzaluna, let me find one that has bristles. I wear them out. So white on the small mezzaluna, swipe it across a paper towel, and I'm gonna come in and just dry brush a little bit of that color on. So I loaded it up with white, Dry and uh, swiped it across my paper towel to get that excess off. Let me just show you. Just swipe it across the paper towel. I don't need to sit there and do this to get all of it off. But swipe it and get some of that off. And this way you can control how much white you put on them. We know white flowers aren't white, right? They have something that gives them definition. It's either gray, lavender, green, yellows, browns, you know, look at a white flower and look for that, that secondary color that's creating that white flower. Okay. And then I'm going to come back with that rigor brush and really pronounce these flips a little bit more. Okay, so you want water in your brush. That right there is what's gonna make them stand out. A little bit more. I like to kind of wipe away, like I wiped with my finger there, just to soften that in. Um, because it would be a little bit grayer there than there. It'd be a little bit more white the closer it is to us. All right. 
It still needs to be whiter, but we're going to dry it and move on to the inner petals. Thank you, Robin Storm. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the, um, you can use the rigger. I'm just going to use a four, a little bit of Payne's gray, a little bit of white. Mix that to a gray color. And we've got a petal here. And a petal there. It's easier to break it down and do the back petals or the um, underneath first. Just so that you don't lose the shape of your flower. I do have a design <laughs> that's been drawn out since last year um, with a magnolia, a big magnolia. So we will be painting that at some point this year. I'm sure. And I'm just going around that little pod in the center, which can be brown, green, uh, yellow, like a yellow tone. I've seen some magnolias that have more of a yellow golden center. Uh, mine in my yard are pretty brown and green, so. That's what I went with. In fact, for the magnolia that I sketched out and drew last year sometime, I, I think I posted on my Facebook page some reference photos that I had taken. All right, so let's dry that. It is a lot of detail, is <laughs> A lot of detail in layers and... Um, just have fun and play with it. If you stress about painting, um, I hope maybe this year you can do what I did about, oh gosh, 12 years ago. I finally just decided that I needed to paint for the joy of it. Um, and if you're, if you don't have the joy while you're painting and creating, um, it, it's just no fun. It's no fun, right? So give yourself that pep talk. I get to shade today. I get to float color. I get to go into my studio and paint. Um, in fact, I just said that to my husband the other day when I was not feeling it. And I said, I get to go in my studio and paint today. And he said, yes, you do. <laughs> so um, especially if you don't have somebody sitting there encouraging you or a friend that you paint with, Tell yourself and talk to yourself that I've got this. It's not rocket science. Play with it, and if you don't like it, backtrack, cover up. Um, let's get in right by that pod. Um, cover up what you're doing, you know, with another color. But for me, what kind of saved my joy of painting and was just painting differently and layer painting layered painting um, is really what kind of got that joy back for me. It's a soft, subtle, light layer. If I don't like it, it's not that hard to take away. So Okay, so I just took that Payne's Gray right at the base of each of those petals again. Um, I would say that's a little bit on the wimpy side of floating. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more and darken that where I know I definitely want it, which is right here. There and right there, I have a nice dark, rich float of color. Okay, now let's go back to that 
flat brush, that number two. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white, swipe it across my paper towel to get rid of that excess. You can pull it down like I showed you. Soften it with your mop or your finger, but my preferred way is with the angle brush. Just kind of loosely float that color on. So in my um, thinking 12 years ago, you know, I always felt like I had to get it done in one sitting um, or, you know, make one thing by double loading or triple loading my brush and being done with it. That's not necessarily always the case. Double loading does speed things up, but if you want that natural, a um, little more painterly look, which is what I like, that layered is going to give you a lot more depth to your pieces. Wow, that one got really dark there, didn't it? But I have a flip there, so I'm gonna leave it. All right, let's see, do I need anything else? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna come back in with that titanium white. Again, I'm using the media line titanium white, um, just because it's a little more fluid. But if you don't have that, just your regular Americana white will work. Oh, thank you, Margie. I try, I'm very wordy with my instructions in my packets um, as well, because I like to, I don't know, you know, if you've painted for years, you can understand it, but if you've not painted for a long time, I really like to, you know, Make sure to wash the brush, rinse the brush with a little pressure. You know, try and give you those details as well in the instructions. Okay, so I'm just going over these petals like I did before with that titanium white. You can make them as big or as thin as you want, but it's just going to curl those petals up. And this one I have, oh, this is the one I... There, that so that dark really made that stand out a lot more. And then I, again, like to soften like where it starts and where it stops. And then this one comes down a little here. To there. All right, let's rinse that. And I'm looking at my finished one. If you got the e-packet from me, do you see there's a little bit of green in there? I don't know if you can even see it on the picture. I just noticed it. Um, I think I must have had antique green or something on my finger and wiped it. But we're going to put it in because I like it. So I'm going to go back to that white. And I'm going to pull down just a little bit. Not all the way across the petal, but just like I did there. I'm going to Pull down some strokes, swipe it with my finger, or use the mop, just to make some of those petals a little bit brighter and whiter. But also have some texture to them. At the end of the day, try it. And if it doesn't work, again, it's paint. Paint over it. But don't stress over it. And I do think I wanna lighten this just a little. Not too much. Alrighty, now let's go to that pod. That center pod, um, I'm going to load up some Payne's Gray, some Plantation Pine. And I want this kind of irregular, so I'm not gonna 
paint an oval. I'm going to tap it in. Make it uneven. Okay. And I'm going to let this dry. Actually, I look like I'm going. I am. <laughs> that easy. I want this to go a little bit more up. So I'm going to redo it, make it go up a little bit more than how it was leaning more to the side. Plantation pine paints gray. Let's let this dry. I'm going to come back to that small mezzaluna brush with a little bit of antique green and titanium white. Work that in. I don't know if you can see that over on the far screen there, right of the screen, a little bit more white. And then I'm going to wipe quite a bit of it off. And I do want to highlight a little bit too much. A little bit more on that leaf that we can see more of. And then on the opposite side of the vein, I'm going to put just a little bit of that color. Okay, and this one has, I can put a little swipe there and a little highlight there since I see more of that one. Okay, now let's go back to that pod. I actually want to make it wider. And you want it to be dry. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Linda. Lynn hit the nail on the head. Um, painting is wonderful for the soul. It's, it so is. It's a lot cheaper than therapy, guys. <laughs> oh, thank you, Judy. I love this one too. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that angle brush with a little bit of Payne's Gray on the toe. And right up underneath that pod, I just wanna kinda of set it in place. So a little floating of color there, a little bit on the right side of it. That was very wimpy floating, Sandy. Need a little bit more right there. Nice and rich. I wanna set that in to that flower. Kind of soften that and dry it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry even more. But since I have a little green that I got on my original, um, I'm gonna go back to what we just did on that um, leaf. Little antique green, a little bit of warm white or titanium white, not in the instructions if you got the e-packet, but I am gonna put a little bit of that color in here Again, just to give it a little more of a natural look. A little bit in there. I think that's the only place I guess I obviously rubbed my finger. Um, there is a petal too, right here. Oh, hello, Sandy. <laughs> that is gray. that we can't see, but I need to bring that all the way to that leaf. I had a big old spot right there that had nothing on it. Okay, rigger brush, liner brush, whichever. Plantation pine. Plantation pine, antique green, a little bit of warm white. Let's kind of tap that around to slightly mix it. And we are going to start at the tip and pull tiny little lines, tiny little lines. Now I don't wanna just pull them straight. Those on the edge are gonna go out towards the left or to the right, but I don't wanna cover up all that dark. If you cover up all the dark, you lose that dimension and um, the fix is to go back and put more dark in. Now I'm just gonna use antique green with white because that antique green can go really yellow and give you a really pretty highlight. 
And we're just gonna do that on a few. Wait, let me check that. Make sure I don't have too much. There we go. Rinse that out. And then I'm gonna go back to that angle brush just because I want to float a little bit of plantation pine right along the base of that. Let's get a little bit more that shading in there. Alrighty, we've got some cast shadows. I could sit there and make that magnolia wider, brighter. Um, use the mezzaluna, use the flat of the brush. Do you see the strokes though? You can see the brush stroke and that's, that just gives it texture. I love that personally. Um, if you don't like texture and you want it to be smooth, then I would just stick with that angle brush method, but you want to leave that some of that gray showing to give that white flower that dimension. Back to the number two, rinse it out, nice and inky, Payne's gray. So water in my brush, a little bit of Payne's gray, Find some place on your palette to work that in. Make it nice and inky. Okay. And then cast shadows. So I'm going to go up underneath the leaf, under the berry. I'm going to go under the branch, but I want to stay away from the branch. So I'm going to just slide underneath that berry. Get those cast shadows. Even your little evergreen sprigs can have some shadow. Just pull a little bit of paints gray. Underneath the berry, just like a little C stroke or a U. Right up underneath that. It's easier to add and darken than it is to take away a whole big dark shadow that you put on. So try and do it slow with very little paint and then add paint as you need to. So right up underneath that petal that goes over the um, cup. Bye Donna, thanks for being here. I wanna make that one darker. I think it's casting a shadow, you can cast shadow there especially here. Under the berries. See how I got that too dark? Just wipe it away. Again, I find it easier to use that flat brush to put on those cast shadows than um, an angle brush, okay? Up underneath the handles. Put a little there, put a little here. Too dark. <laughs> here. I think I just picked glitter up somewhere. Little shadow there. Underneath that saucer. And then underneath here, you can just kind of swipe it under and then use your finger. Kind of swipe it out. You can use the mezzaluna to dry brush a little bit of shading underneath there or the angle brush. But just like I did that and using your finger to swipe it gives you that really nice little shadow. Um, where else do I need one? 
leaf there. I'm going to put a little one right down the side here. And I think that might be it. Let me pull this back. Now, what I didn't do on this one, let me show you what I didn't do on this one that I did on the autumn and the, sp and the spring. So spring was the first, then summer, then autumn. On this first one and autumn, I did this little edge. Um, if you wanna do that edge, you can go and, and see the autumn video that's on my YouTube channel, how I did that. Um, but since spring doesn't have anything around the edge, I think I'm gonna leave winter with no border around it either, you know, kind of framing it in. I, I feel like um, it'll be every other one that's framed in and will look good. So with all of my paintings, oh, I need to fix that. With all of my paintings, um, and I highly recommend that every time you finish something, evaluate your lights and your darks. Sometimes we feel like we need to brighten something when actually we need to darken it and vice versa, okay? So that's typically where I will start, reevaluate everything, um, use your background color as your eraser. If you need to erase things, come back in and bump up that white on that flower here and there just to make it look a little more white. But again, subtly, just little strokes here and there, nothing major, and certainly not the whole petal. All right. Oh, goodness me. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Lynn. And you're so welcome, Kim. Yes, there are lots of different ways that you can um, use that rigor brush. Okay, guys. So, again, like, comment, share. Um, that is going to get you entered into the drawing for those giveaways that we have. Um, it's nice to be back with you guys. Um, like the green here on the right, but like you demonstrated both versions. Yes, I like the one on the right too, where it's a little bit thinner and airy um, with that rigor brush. So anyway, nice to be back with you guys in the new year. I look forward to lots of lessons. Again, thank you so much for everybody that's um, watched and supported um, all throughout last year. I greatly appreciate it. There will be a much more content coming this year, especially if you're in my membership group. Um, have a fantastic year planned for us. And um, again, lots of lessons, tips, techniques, ways to use products, different things to um, incorporate into your art. And I look forward to sharing it with you guys. So I appreciate you being here. Um, my notebook is full of notes today. Oh, that's great to hear, Virginia. So, and I, I, that's always my goal is to share what I know. And if you learn something new, oh, that just means the world. So Okay, guys, have a fantastic week. For my members, I'll see you guys tomorrow night, and I'm really hoping that my brother-in-law will be willing to pop on and say hi to you guys. Um, my brother-in-law from Turkey that I just went and visited in September. So, um, again, like, comment, share. That'll get you entered into the drawings. I will be back not next week, but the week after. My nephew's getting married next weekend, so I will be away um, at his wedding and won't be here for Sunday in the studio with me. So have a good one. I will talk to y'all later. Don't forget when you go to that site, my website, and use those um, three letters, A-R-T, all capitals, make sure to hit that apply button. And let me tell you something real quick, <laughs> since I have you. If you order an e-packet, my, my website does not download the e-packet automatically to you. I send it through a, a service called WeTransfer. It's free. Um, so make sure to check your junk and um, spam box to make sure that you didn't get it. And if you didn't, just email me and let me know, okay? The other thing is when you order on my website, I don't charge shipping in the initial order because my website charges by the item. And I was refunding hundreds, thousands actually of dollars a year um, in overcharges for shipping. So I invoice the actual shipping cost, which ends up saving you money, but it's a little bit of a pain. Um, because you got to go back in and pay it. So, but I will send an invoice after every order that comes through that's shipped. And um, you can just go to that, click on the link, pay it. You don't have to be, have a PayPal account. You can just use your credit card. But anyway, just to let you know, my uh, website on the very front page, it says, I don't, chart, I don't 
charge shipping in the order, but I will invoice for it, okay? I hope that makes sense. So, and my goal this year is to work on a new website. So, speaking of, I got a new toy. <laughs> I was going to end and then I just looked over. I brought something show and tell. So I'm going to come back down here. Hello. Um, I got a new toy. I got a Glowforge, which is a laser cutting machine. And I have been cutting up a storm. So I've been cutting some little things to make us keychains and, you know, throw those in with some orders. I put some up on my website. Um, but anyway, you can paint them. You can stain them. Um, I did a little tag with a little tassel thing on it and then I with Tracy Moreau's permission um, I did a little phone stand with her quote on there um, super cute right and you can paint that up I'm gonna have those available soon um, on my website so I just need to get more materials to cut because I've been trying to use it every day um, I think for five years when I was like oh I want it I want it I want it I was petrified to use it because something that can literally burn my house down <laughs> scared the bejesus out of me. So, um, but I've been trying to use it every day and learn more about it um, so that I can create fun, new, exciting things. So anyway, that's my show and tell for today. <laughs> um, oh, I, I will, Lucy. I definitely will. Okay, guys, have a good week. Don't forget, get those brushes out, get that paint out, paint something. If you're not in the mood, base coat something. We'll get that momentum going. I'm going to say it over and over and over again. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.